Let's once and for all set the record straight on whether or not Oregon State and Washington State are going to the Big 12. And the answer is an unequivocal not happening. And here's why. And I, I want to put this out. I want you to have the information. I am not going to give you one bit of my opinion in this, in this next five minutes. I want you to understand that. I am going to present the facts to you. The questions presented by a lot of just delusional people who I don't believe have any idea what they're talking about center around the fact that the powers that be in college football, the P4s, the SECs, the ACCs, you know, the Big 12, the, the Big 10, ESPN, don't want uh, any of the information leaked out. They are doing everything they can do to protect America from knowing that Oregon State and Washington State are the only two teams left, and they'd be getting $600 million over the next two years. Okay, well, here are the facts of the case. That's completely not true. The college football playoff, in no way, shape, or form, under any circumstance at all, is going to pay the Pac-12, whether it's 12 teams, two teams, no teams. They are never getting a payout of $600 million. They are not getting a $320 million payout. That's just not how the system works. I am going to put up a graphic on the screen for you now that is from the college football playoff website where you can see the distributions. In 2023-24, each conference will receive $300,000 for each of its schools when the school's football team meets the NCAA, NCAA's APR, so essentially their academic um, and on-field requirements for participation in postseason football. Each independent institution will receive $300,000 when its football team meets the standard. So under nowhere, no way, no how, uh, in the economic distribution of college football, is there a path for the Pac-2 to get $600 million? It's simply not true. Stop believing that. L read the second line. A conference will receive $6 million from each team that is selected for a college football playoff semifinal. So if you win a bowl game, you get into the semifinal, you'll get $6 million. Not $600 million, not $300 million, $6 million. And if you go to point three, each conference whose team participates in a playoff semifinal, Cotton Fiesta or Peach Bowl, or in the national championship game, will receive $2.85 million to cover expenses for each game. Under no circumstance is there a path for Oregon State and Washington State to each receive $320 million. It's not true. I spoke to several sources today. One of them in the Big 12 who told me point blank there have been no conversations about Oregon State and Washington State joining the conference. We are focused on building the business of the Big 12. Unequivocal. I spoke to a source close to Washington State today who told me there have not been conversations between Washington State and the Big 12 since the day that the conference melted down when they called the Big 12 looking for a lifeline and the Big 12 said, at this time, we are not prepared to expand further. There have been, from a source close to Washington State, there have been no conversations. I don't know how else to say that. I have spoken to you about Oregon State multiple times. I'm going to put another graphic up. This is a presentation that was given to the Oregon State Assembly by, and look at the names who wrote this, President Murphy, Scott Barnes, the athletic director. Now, before I show you this next slide, if you were going to get $320 million, would you tell your state assembly that you have a $42.1 million funding gap after the fiscal year 2025. If you were getting $320 million, would Oregon State President Murphy 
and Scott Barnes, the athletic director, have put a presentation together for the Oregon State Assembly and said, we're going to need $42.1 million to cover our conference and media revenue shortfall, ticket sales, annual funds, and miscellaneous income that we are not going to get. Note the last one, miscellaneous income, that goes all the way down to $12.6 million, and it's a $2.23 million shortfall. Does it seem like if you were getting $320 million in the status quo, that you would be telling your state assembly that you're going to have a $25 million shortfall. Friends, I need you to separate truth from fact. These are not, these are not truths. People that are telling you that the, the college football powers that be are, and I, I apparently, and I want to clarify this too, Jake, because I said this yesterday. Uh-huh. Apparently, it was not locked on Pac-12. It was locked on Big 12, who had a conspiracy theory. This is what I'm told where this came from. They had a conspiracy theorist on their podcast several weeks ago who said the powers that be in college football are trying to keep this secret so that Oregon State and Washington State don't have leverage. <coughs> so I'm just going to throw this out there. Uh, don't you think if this was the reality, Oregon State and Washington State would have leverage? That's just one. Like, do you think us knowing about it as a fan base changes their leverage in negotiations? It means nothing what the fans know. Nothing. And I just will again put it out there. Jake, we got to stop with the, the clickbaiting and the, hey, we... Look at this. I've got a tinfoil hat on. Yeah. This is 100% a conspiracy theory. Yeah, I mean, that's that's all this is. And, and, and I think that, you know, it's absolutely true when you say, hey, we need to be separating conspiracy theories from truth and fact. We need to be separating, hey, we have nothing to talk about, so we're just making things up versus what the actual case is. And that's what's tough is, like, you go and you look at, the websites, the information, right? The college football playoff committee and the in the, the the what they put out what you need to do to get this amount of money. So let me get this right. The amount of money doesn't add up and what you need to do to get that money doesn't add up. They're telling you exactly what you have to do and how it works. This isn't like our opinion. This isn't our speculation. This is how it is. It's that's just the reality of the situation. So this whole week we've been getting, oh well, Dude, are, are they going to the Big 12? The Big 12 wants to add them? Like, what's going on? It's like, got to be hundreds, hundreds. of yeah. DMs saying, are yeah. you guys going to address this? Why are you guys ignoring this? Hey, we need you to talk about this. Hey, is this – we've avoided it as long as we can avoid it. And I, I just ask you to go back to college realignment, which I've been a little burned out on talking about. It has been nice to talk about football games. It has been nice to talk about – whether it's Coach Prime or the Mullet or Lincoln Riley, or what, it's been great talking football. But at some point, we're going to get away from this. Yeah, I don't know when that happens, and it's probably not going to be for five years. It's going to be a weekly. My guess is it's going to be a weekly topic. The only way I see this story changing is if the ACC melts down. That's the only way, in my opinion, that Oregon State and Washington State, and I don't even know at that point if it would be the Big 12, I, that's the only way I can see Oregon State and Washington State going to another conference. Yeah, and I just think that that's it. You know, Oregon State and Washington State, again, are, are in this position where their primary focus shouldn't be the Big 12. It should be winning this court dispute that they're in with the other 10 uh, members who are leaving the conference. Because if you lose that court battle and you lose that case, you're done anyway. Right, because you know that the other ten are going to vote to dissolve the conference, so they get paid and they get their share, and it's very straightforward. So that's why I say let's stop talking about you know some fairy dust Fugazi situation that you know you guys think is going to happen, and let's start talking about yeah. the realities of it. And 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 what's frustrating is that we really stay away from like oh like this channel made this up or that dude said that like we don't really do much of that on this show, At all. but. Oh. And, I, and I'm not, I, I'll be honest with you. I said this yesterday on the show. I think Locked On Big 12 has zero credibility. I don't watch it. I refuse to watch it after what happened with neighbors. I refuse to watch it. I just, I, I, I told you also, I'm not a big consumer of other podcasts. I truly am not. 
I watch 365 on occasion because they always have great guests. But I don't know what exactly they're telling you. But what I'm telling you is there's no such thing as 320 million, 640 million. All this this 320 million number that's been DM'd to me a million times. <laughs> Yeah. I got laughed at by Washington State today. Like, I've known somebody at Washington State who I've talked to on a pretty regular basis, and this person laughed at me. This person said straight up, would we be fighting to keep the conference together? Would we be spending millions of dollars? And this, per I said millions, you're spending millions. This person said we're spending tens of millions of dollars between legal fees and man hours. Would you be spending that much money to try and keep a conference together if there was 300 or $600 million down the line? <laughs> and that person absolutely laughed at me while saying that. And I, I, I straight up had to said, you know, I'm just doing my due diligence. I'm just asking questions because so many people have asked me about this. And I can also tell you, like, people at the Big 12 have, have said over and over and over again, we're not adding six Pac-12 members. We're not, we are not going to give half of the conference vote to six friends who would be able to, at that point, really in a power struggle would have an enormous influence when you already have a voting block of Arizona and Arizona state and you're losing Texas and Oklahoma, you're finally getting rid of the behemoths in the room. I can tell you straight away. I've heard that a dozen times. The, the best news and the worst news is, Hey, Texas and Oklahoma are out. We've lost the, 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 the problem children of the conference. Now we're adding four, Pac-12 members who are going to probably vote in lockstep and BYU is in that group as well because what's best for Utah is probably best for BYU. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you would bring in Oregon State and Washington State to make that block stronger and then like my 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 Big 12 sources and my Washington State source saying, "Hey, look at this chart. They present Oregon State presented this to their state legislature." Like, it's just not true, you guys. Yeah. And again, it's not personal to me. I don't know the guy that does Locked On Big 12. I don't, it's not personal to me. No. Whatever he's telling you is completely wrong. It's just, we've got to figure out how to separate opinion from fact. Yeah, and, it, and I think that the, the troubling thing is it's so spelled out. It, this isn't like hard to understand. Yeah, it's this not is, like you guys, this is publicly yeah, available. I mean, this it, is off, and that's why I screenshot the entire website. This is off of the college football playoff website. Yeah, it's not like this is like, you know, CIA fifth level classified or something. Like, this is public information. It's not hard to find. It's not. Like, we're the, talking about aver aggregates. Of six million dollars, six million six hundred thousand dollars. Like, there's nowhere in the world where you're getting three hundred million dollars in the Pac-12. And the other part of this is, by the way, Oregon State and Washington State to even get to the semifinal payment level would have to shock the world. You would have to absolutely stun the world. Because one of the things that was pointed out to me today is no matter where Oregon State and Washington State up, and let's clarify this as well, because there's a lot of people saying that this is going to happen any moment. Oregon State and Washington State are locked in the middle of a fight for money and assets in the Pac-12. They have scheduling problems. And somebody asked me today, well, Look at how all these other conferences were able to write a schedule. Why is this a problem for Oregon State and Washington State? Because they have no idea who they're playing. When you're in the Big 12 or you're in the Big 10 and you've expanded and you've added Cal and Stanford to the ACC, you know who your players are. Yeah. You know who your, your opponents are. You just have to fit them into a graph, essentially. Oregon State and Washington State do not know who they're playing. They do not know who their partners are. Now, we've also been told repeatedly over the last 10 days that Oregon State and Washington State are pretty far down the line with the Mountain West Conference. Right. They have had advanced conversations. They have to get through this court situation. As we reported on the show yesterday, and now everybody's run with it today, there are negotiations for settlement happening between 
these two universities, Oregon State and Washington State, and the exiting 10 members. Thanks. With the idea of wrapping this up in the next three weeks. They cannot wait. I think it's November 14th or something. Right. Yeah. They cannot wait until November 14th just to get the court proceeding going because at that point, you're probably pushing past the holidays. Yes. So you're into calendar year 2024. Like it's a, have. It's a big, it's a big roadblock. Yeah. So you have to get on with your business. And one of the things that's so interesting to me is all of these people grasping at this Oregon State, Washington State rumor who think $300 million is the powers that be are trying to like hide this inform? Nobody's trying to hide information. It's all, I, I cannot express this enough. These are state institutions. It's public available information. Yeah. You're looking at the front page of a, of a document that was presented to the Oregon state house that was sent to me and a ton of other media members. Guys, this information's not hard to get. And, and that's why I say, like, uh, again, it, it, understand, be very clear. Don't don't get this confused or muddled or, you know, don't get this wrong. This has nothing to do, as far as we're concerned, with the Locked On Network or Locked On Big 12. This has everything to do with, hey, a certain channel, and I don't care if your name is Locked On Big 12 or not, is essentially just making things up because that's what this is. And I hate saying that, but that's what this is. And the I, we haven't found one source that we've talked to and we have done, you guys know that we don't just talk to one person and we have done a lot of legwork on this. We have not found a single TV or college institution, college football board of regents, nobody that will tell us Oregon state and Washington state, Oh yeah, that's happening. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, nobody is saying that. Like I talked to two two recruiting services on DM today about this story that recruits are hearing that Oregon State and Washington State are going to the to the Big Twelve. Nobody can substantiate that. When the when all the realignment was going on, you know what the hardest part of the realignment was? People were calling us to substantiate stuff. Like, hey, I, hey. I, and we would call one person at a school and they'd be like, yeah, here's what's happening. Like it wasn't hard to get the information. Yeah. Just people didn't do the legwork. Yeah. So now we talk to the same people like, yeah, that I haven't heard that. The, this person at Washington state laughed at that. What uh, do you really think this person said, do you really think we'd be doing all of this spending tens of millions of dollars in legal fees and man hours? If we had, if we had, and this person was saying $600 million coming. No. <laughs> no, they would not. Yeah. They would not. They would simply be going, going about their business. Yeah. They would, they would not be doing this. And the other funny thing is I know a ton of people in the powers that be of, of TV sports in this country. And this idea, the other wild rumor out there was ESPN was going to force this to happen because ESPN was going to be on the hook to pay this money. ESPN has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. ESPN has nothing to do with paying that money. I, I mean, I hope you understand that. The distribution does not come from ESPN. No, it doesn't. Comes from the NCAA. The N it's the NCAA's money. They have the rights to it. All the conferences have signed their, their playoff rights over to the NCAA and the college football playoff entity who then sold it to ESPN and ABC. ESPN and ABC do not cut checks yeah. out of the college football playoff system to schools and conferences directly. That that is that is as simply as I can make it. And, and it's just I I don't know why people want to latch on to this conspiracy stuff so hard. Like, it, it, <laughs> no like idea. The, the other part of this that just baffles me is like, we're, you guys understand we're still talking about Washington State and Oregon State, right? Like, we're not talking about Oregon or. Alabama or Ole Miss. That's or the like, other you know thing what I mean? today. Like, we're not talking about like, you know, national championship contenders here. The other thing today that was so interesting is I was talking to somebody about media markets because a Washington state fan was just all up in my DMs today. Like just DM, 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 DM. Because I said, hey, Washington state and Oregon state don't deliver Seattle and Portland. Right. And this person like is sending me numbers. And so I said, okay, let me just make sure I have any idea what I'm talking about. 
it's texting with this, this particular person at a major network who said, if I want Seattle, I'm going to Washington. And if I want Portland, I am probably going to Oregon. Thanks. Not, and the exact quote is, I would never have thought of Oregon State for Portland. And this person is a pretty, pretty important person at a major sports property. Yeah. I would never have thought of Oregon State for Portland. The Blazers come to my mind first. Now, Seattle's different because Seattle, what's interesting about Seattle is Washington State actually plays in Seattle. Washington State has a following and their TV numbers are strong, but their direct response television ratings are, are not great in Seattle, especially when against other major competition on in the market at the same time. When it's just Washington State, like their, their Friday night big game matchups have done exceptionally well. And they have some, Washington State has some really good TV numbers. But you're not adding, as it was explained to me, you're not adding Washington State and Oregon State to get Portland and Seattle. You're, you're not. And if you wanted Seattle and you were looking for expansion, you would add Gonzaga. Yeah. So I'm just telling you, you can run with this stuff and you can believe who you want to believe. And again, I don't know the dude at Locked On Big 12. and Ain't about that. It's not about that. It's not personal. I don't know who it is, and I'm sure I'll get DMs about it. I don't really care. If they're the ones putting this out, it's completely wrong. It is completely inaccurate. Enough of me, more of you. Good afternoon. Happy Friday to you. We are talking about Oregon State and Washington State. I promise you in 34 minutes, we are going to get to all of the games because I actually think we have a plethora of games to talk about. But as always at this time, it is time for some buckshot. Yeah. And we need to do that. Yeah. We need to feel better about As if ourselves. You fired up enough already. It's time to get it going. My driver again was terrible this morning. Oh, uh, who knew? Going to Top Golf today, tonight rather, with the with all the friends and fam bam. If you're mm-hmm. at Top Golf tonight, make sure you say hello. Cheers to you on a Friday. Yeah, <sighs> there you go. Buckshot, buckedup.com. You guys, I can't say enough about this product. Um, It is, if you're a five-hour energy guy, if you are somebody that uses shots to make yourself get through the day, this is the best one in the business because it has got really high-quality ingredients that are engineered to give you mental clarity. Its entire job is to deliver 200 milligrams of caffeine into your system to give you a lift, And it's got a bunch of brain food as well. So there's no crash. There's no spike. You just feel more mental clarity to get that report done, to get that, you know, hey, I got a big conference call to wrap up the week, whatever it is you need. Maybe you just have a long drive back to the office or back to your house. Buckedup.com. Get yourself some buckshot. And again, use the promo code Monty20 to get 20% off at checkout because it makes it $23 a box which is an absolute steal. It's a great price for a great product. And that's what I tell you every day about Bucked Up, you guys. Bucked Up makes the best products because they use the best ingredients. And all of their products do exactly what they tell you they're going to do. Don't take my word for it. Get to buckedup.com. Use the promo code MONTY20. Make sure you tell them you heard about it on the Monty Show. All right, let's get your comments in here first. Well, uh, on a Friday, why wouldn't we start with the best news of the day? Welcome Charles Arnett to the membership. Let's go, baby. Finish the week strong. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Good to see you. By We are just, I think we're like four four new subscribers away from uh, 39,000. 39. I think it is six, excuse me. We're at 38,994. So if you are not subscribed, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe. We'd love to get to 39,000 today. Uh, Charles Arnett, thank you for becoming a member of the show. You guys, we love our members. Um, We have a great community on this show. I really appreciate everybody who supports us. Uh, You look at Charles Arnett. He's a member of the, uh, now an entry-level member of the show. He pays $1.99 a month to get all of his comments highlighted and read. For $9.99 a month, you can get into our exclusive Instagram chat, members only 
everything from prize picks to arguments about Donovan McNabb being a guy that drinks a lot and is a pretty shitty quarterback in the because NFL. Because garbage. You know. Yeah, just the run-of-the-mill stuff. You name it, we talk about it. Yeah. Uh, right here on the Monty Show. Stephen Smith gives us $20. Thank you, Stephen. Have a good weekend. The podcast that started Washington State and Oregon State to the Big 12 will, will happen was locked on Big 12, not locked on Pac-12. Yes. My bad. Yeah, My can bad. you I got get it, it wrong. right? Jesus, man. I know it's such a different name. Yep. Come on. Strange Clouds. Up, for five dollars, what's up, Strange Clouds? Uh, will a time ever come when you don't lead every show, or at least talk about it in great detail with college football realignment? What well, would you like us to talk about? Help me. Every time someone asks us this, this is what I'm going to ask you. What would you like to talk about? Because I got news for you. When we have what hundred DMs, probably tons. tons. I mean, it had to be. I I I, I don't know how many people asking. Hey, like. What's going on with this? You guys are gonna, like I don't know when they started talking about this on Lockdown Big 12. I have no idea. But in the last probably 5 6 days, we just get DMs every day. Hey, is this true? Hey, what do you know about this? Hey, can you talk about this? And we have tried not to talk about it. But this whole thing where there was, you know, the powers that be are trying to keep it secret and not let anybody know like that was pretty much it for me. And the idea that the, the PAC-2 is going to get a $600 million payout is wild. And <laughs> the more wild part is, is if people believe that. Yeah. When the college football playoff payout is online, publicly available on the web. That's why I, I screenshotted this. I want you guys to see this is, this is on the internet, man. You can go and look at it for yourself. There's nowhere in there that says a conference is going to make $600 million. Nowhere. It's just, it's wild to me. So you ask, we talk about what people ask us to talk about. Yeah. We talk about the biggest stories in sports. And if somebody says, hey, we're going to talk about a game show in our non-sports stories of the day today, where it's a dating show where people are naked. <laughs> that was sent to us by two people and said, hey, this would be great for non-sports stories. Damn right it would. We agree wholeheartedly. Uh, Hello, Billy. What's up, Hello, Billy? Not as bad as you thought you were going to be at West Virginia, eh? Mountain Mama. Uh, the new guy at Locked On Big Twelve is horrible. I, I'm not. I, I'm not a huge fan of saying this show sucks or that guy or our show's great. I don't think shows are bad or good. You either like a show or you don't. And I appreciate everybody being here. I don't like what they did to Josh Neighbors. I don't like the way they treated him. I'm thrilled that he got his gig at, at 365. I think he does a really nice job. I think he did a great job covering the Big 12 for lockdown. It's a it's a real shame that that, that, that happened. Uh, Kaufman, for $5. I feel that I apologize for this topic. I'm happy you guys answered my question about this. Keep up the great work, Monty and Jake. Kaufman, thank you. Always good to see you, friend. Uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, let's see, who else is in today? Um... Washcloth Trick says NBA. We t we trust me. We talk a ton of NBA on this show. I yeah, think we, most people know that. We've been talking NBA the last several days. Yeah, you know, I mean, hey, <laughs> Cam Harrison says Monty show is always on point. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We try. We talk about the biggest stories in sports. A hundred percent. We talk about the biggest stories in sports. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Mike Smith. Cam can have more time to heal as long as Utah wins. The moment Utah loses, Cam will be cured. Tonight's a big one. We have a full preview of that game coming up in 27 minutes on the show. That is a big one. That I don't is disagree a, with you. That is a big, big one. I, do, I think he's probably able to play. We've heard about it repeatedly. He's such an important figure to that team. He is such a, an important guy to that, to that football team. I just don't know what else you – Yeah. I don't know what else you do. You know, like it, it is – it is just – it's wild to me that – yeah, it's wild to me that we are – that we are seeing a situation where they're still undefeated. They've won a Pac-12 game and Cam hasn't taken a snap yet. Yeah. It's wild. Joey B, Washington State equals Colorado State with UW in Seattle and CU in Boulder. Um, it's just – it. Kirk, the other thing we talked a lot about on the show was Kirk Schultz and uh -huh. his the view of Kirk Schultz around college football, and it's not good. I don't know. 
I don't know what it would take for the Big 12 to want to be in business with Kirk Schultz. I, mean, I think how, that's how a real good. That's the thing. I mean, that's a real that's a real deal. And I don't know how you I don't know how you fix that, frankly. I, I really don't know. Yeah. But I think that's going to be very difficult to do. That's that's just my my opinion. Um, but I think Kirk Schultz is I think Kirk Schultz is a credibility problem for Washington State. No doubt. So uh, immaculate conspiracy requires a crime. This is just business. So immaculate, you believe there's a conspiracy theory, um, or maybe you don't. I don't know. Um, I think it's ridiculous to think that there's a conspiracy in college football to try and keep the public from knowing the truth about finances in the college football playoff. Over Oregon State and Washington State. And do you really think that or, the conspiracy? So w this conspiracy thing that Immaculate's talking about, is it on this show, whoever, whatever, said, hey, well, you know, they're trying to make sure that Oregon State and Washington State and the rest of college football don't find out about this. So they're not allowing anybody to talk about it. And I'm like, dude, it's online. Yeah. What do you mean that they're not uh, they're not allowing people to talk about it's it? It's like widely available. <laughs> like the, it's public information. Yeah, like this. Uh, you go go to get on the internet. Like it's not hard. And you understand that it's org uh, again. I for everybody who believes this, an immaculate. I'm not saying you believe this or that whatever. For anybody who believes this. This is the budget projection yeah. that was presented to the Oregon State Assembly by President Murphy and Scott Barnes, the athletic director. If they were getting $600 million or even 300, I wasn't at $320 million or whatever, would they have a $42.1 million shortfall? Those are numbers of death. They would not. There's no conspiracy theory. There's yeah. no effort. They're public institutions. You can't hide the information. It's it's against the law. Yeah, It has to be out there. They're not private institutions, friends. So I don't understand the, I don't understand the conspiracy theory stuff. I don't. And there's a huge comment dump there, so I apologize. Uh, Mike Smith says Immaculate was the guy on the show. I don't understand what that means. What do you mean he was the guy on the show? Conference Commissioner Gumby, I'm not allowed to talk about how much I like the showgram. Yeah, shh. Yeah, shut up, will you? Don't Jesus. tell anybody. Don't tell anybody that we're close Good to 30, 39,000, so they should hey guys. subscribe to the Monty Show. Hey guys, let's let's you know. Yeah, dude, come on. You know, let's Program. let's yeah, let's keep that quiet. You know, we're at 39, 38, 9, 9, 7. We are three away from nine thirty nine thousand. Uh, Gary Gary Wolf Schultz knows nothing. Old 70s TV reference there. <laughs> I like it. Charles Arnett, what's up, Charles? You do have to feel for Oregon State and Washington State fans and alumni. It's a terrible situation. conversation, right? Okay, yeah. you want to talk about empathizing with the fan base and the fan, uh, the fan base and the alumni and the staffers who have no control of this? That's fine. I'm, I'm with that. I, I, I think that, and I've, I've been saying this, like Oregon State is truly uh, a victim here. And you, there's definitely, in my opinion, a conversation around marketing and lack thereof and not doing a good enough job in that sense. But you, you're a victim here, no doubt. Yep, I agree 100%. Hey, look at that. Another new member to the show, Chuck B. Let's go, Chuck. Let's go, baby. Love it, Chuck. Appreciate you joining the membership. You guys hit that join button. Uh, it really helps uh, support the show. Thank you for that. Strange Clouds, two more dollars. You could talk NFL, NBA, actual college football games. Dude, have you... Like, That's all we've been to talking your, about. To the show, bro. Like we do a three-hour show. Ask or and, ask ask uh, Okie State Gundy fans if we've talked college football yeah, on like, the show. Like, uh, dude, I love you, but I, uh, maybe uh, I I don't know, man. I know it's Friday and it's been a long week, but you damn well know that we talk about games and and stuff. And by the way, telling us to talk NFL, NBA, or actual college games. Why don't we be a little more specific? And we had Will Howard on the show yesterday. No, like, like, what we, do you mean, dude? We, I mean, we like, talk about it. We talk college football in the NFL every day. John Teal for two dollars. Oregon, Washington State needs to just root for Clemson and FSU, dude. I the Clemson the Clemson conspiracies that are out there are far more believable. And that's how I look at it. That Clemson is going to somehow escape the grant of rights in the ACC. Dude, that's like the chamber of death and the ma magician like dying underwater in a safe or some shit. It's like probably different. Than the what grant you're of rights. Of. Excuse, 
tip jar. Damn. Um, the grant of rights in the ACC is rock solid. I If Clemson is uh, is able to get out of it, that's going to be a lifeline for Oregon State but, and Washington look, State. Look, and I, and I love the conversation around, like, for all the tinfoil folks out there around ESPN, I love the conversation around, hey, dude, it behooves TV networks to get, you know, brands like Clemson or UNC or Florida State out of the ACC situation and into the SEC and the Big Ten so that they can rework those TV contracts and bring in more more sales into their uh, into their fold at ESPN. Like, okay, cool. That actually has some legs, right? If you think about it, it, it would make sense at that point. But that's my thing with this Oregon State, Washington State situation. Exactly. Like, though, like exactly. we're talking about Oregon State and Washington State, not Clemson and UNC. Exactly right. Even though Clemson right. is down, obviously, five head's not there anymore, as I say all the time. Five head. Like, Clemson's down. But they're still Dabo. They're still Clemson. They're still, every single year, a relevant team. Whether you like it or not, doesn't matter. They're relevant. Dabo. And that's it. You know. Uh, strange clouds for $5. When you talk about the same subject for literally six months straight, it gets old. I'd rather talk about actual sports going on. What, do you really think we enjoy? Do you not hear the frustration in my voice? When, when we are having to debunk conspiracy theories and, and about the powers that be trying to keep publicly available information from being publicly available. And here's the other problem with that, dude. And again, I, I'm not making this personal with you. There's no need to get all upset. I'm just pointing out the holes in this argument or this complaint. If, if you think that we've talked about the same thing every single day, you don't understand that it's not the same thing every day. It may fall under the same umbrella of, you know, the Pac-12 TV deal. But who's deal not talking or, about football realignment yeah, and like, Big 12 expansion and the Pac-12 TV deal? Who's not talking about Prime? Deal? Who's not talking? Yeah. Like, dude, we've talked. Dude. Yeah, look I, at all the shows we did I on Prime. Understand. Jake was naked on the show. Yeah, dude, talking, I was well, freaking a, oiled up. Okay, no, that's I wasn't. A lie. Okay. That's probably different than that's, what you're thinking. Yeah, that's Listen, a lie. dude. That was I, at home I, in your bedroom. Dude, okay, that's that's <laughs> true. That's very, very true. Macaque. Yeah. Uh, dude, the reality of the situation is it's been a slow summer in sports. I understand why you're frustrated. Don't you think we would love to have dude, had blockbuster trade after trade in the NBA? There was nothing you're, you're in the You're the NBA. one that gets to sit there in your recliner while you drink a beer and watch the show on your TV, dude. I, we like, got to actually, like, like do we, a show. We have to do the content. So, like, trust me when I say, yeah, sure, I'd love to... Not talk about this every day for six months, but but when again, it, and I just want you to know this because I don't want you to think that we're just scheming out here. Like we were not going to talk about this today, but when we're getting no. DM DM like just pounded, and in I'm DMs. not exaggerating, hundreds of DMs yeah. saying, "Hey, talk about, hey, hey, what do you know? Can you get hundreds yes. Yes. of DMs on there, yes. and not just on Twitter, on my Instagram as well. I'm out there playing golf this morning. Ding, 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 literally. Ding. I, I literally asked him, we're out on the golf course, and his phone keeps going off. Ding, ding, ding. And I'm like, dude, will you shut your phone up, bro? We're out on the golf course trying to have a nice time for five minutes, and all your phone's doing is, buh, 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 buh. like, dude, shut up. And the driver's doing the same thing. Yeah, dude. Hey, hey. Like, dude, my God. Uh, let's see. UW fan Jim. What's up, Jim? Good to see you. Live in Seattle, and I think you guys are selling the Cougar fans short. They are think here. Restate that for me. Yeah, right um, back. I think that watch. I and this is what I what I was saying before. Like a guy in television, at a major sports entity, told me Washington State does pull in Seattle, but when the the when the Huskies are on, Washington State does a far lower number. When I mean, it's just not it's not the same thing. And Spokane belongs. I, there's a lot of people in. And maybe reality is different than perception. I don't know. But there's a lot you know. of people who believe Spokane belongs to Gonzaga basketball. And Gonzaga. I, and I think it's hard to argue that. Washington yeah. State. But Washington State has good TV numbers. And I don't want to slight them it's at all. That, and look, look, it's not that they don't have TV numbers, right? But there's a formula to this, right? Yes, TV numbers, consistent TV numbers, which you do have pretty consistent TV numbers. At Washington at State. At Washington State. There's no question about that. But... I, I think at the same time, it's relevancy nationally. Washington is more relevant nationally than Cam Ward and company, right? Like Washington, just as a brand, I don't care if you have a Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback or not. You are more relevant 
nationally to the people that matter, ESPN, Fox, yes. whoever it may be that weekend, you're more relevant to those people. So when Toyota or Bucked Up or whoever wants to get into the Seattle market or whichever yes. market we're talking about, when, when, when they want to get into that market and get in front of as many eyeballs as possible, it's not Washington State or Oregon State. It's Washington or Oregon, and if we really want to get nitty-gritty, it's Gonzaga. And in, in, in the areas in and around locally where Washington State and Oregon State are, okay, that's a different thing. If you want to make an impact locally, sure, you'll go with those brands. But as far as national notoriety, that's where you're going to struggle. And I think the other thing people don't understand, and just because I've worked in the industry, I, I have direct experience with this. When somebody like Toyota wants to spend their money, it's feel, not real. Yeah. Speaking of really crappy golf swing, it's feel, not real. They, they, I, I would tell you, and I'm just using Toyota as an example, it, or Boeing, because it's Washington, let's use Boeing or Amazon, or Starbucks, if they want to spend college football money, do you think they're like, well, Washington State? No. They're like, uh, if we want to penetrate Seattle, we probably should spend on the Seahawks one. And, you know, Washington's a really good team this year. They Like, these are the conversations that happen. They're like, hey. Excellent strategy, sir. We are, we need to get the Camry moving in Seattle. You know, our EV units are low. Where are we going to spend our sports dollars? They're going to say Seahawks number one, Washington football number two. Yeah. And my my guess is they'll go they will go to the Seattle Mariners third. I don't think Washington State is probably top five because the Kraken, I think, it'd be top five this time of year. With preseason open in the NHL, Connor Connor Bedard is really Savage. crushing souls. Uh, go Hawks. But I would tell you that I think the Kraken would be fourth, and I think Washington State's probably fifth in Seattle. The problem is Toyota's not spending money in Spokane the way they are in Seattle. Yeah. So it's feel, not real. When you're spending money and you're placing dollars, trust me, we do this every single day. We talk to major, major think people like advertising agencies, hey guys. people like small businesses, major corporations. And what's the first thing they say? Hey, what's your market penetration like? We need, we've had the direct conversation. Hey, we need market penetration in South Florida. Do you got, what's your reach? Like the other day, a company was asking me, what's your reach in South Florida? We really need South Florida. And we're like talking about, hey, we're here, this city. To get, like, that's what the conversations are like. They're not like, well, you know, they're direct conversations about marketplaces. And if somebody wants Seattle, Somebody wants Portland. Do you think they're thinking, well, Portland, that's Oregon State? <laughs> no, I don't think they are. I think they're thinking Blazers with the NBA season coming, and I think they're thinking Oregon football. Yeah. Anywhere in the state of Oregon, I guarantee you it's Oregon Ducks football. Okay, there endeth the lesson. I'll shut up now. Court McMullen says, uh, love the show. Court, the show loves you, sir. Appreciate you. Hello, Billy. Uh, I'm glad the boys are three and one. We always uh, will always love the team, but still want Brownie boy gone. Well, isn't there a West Virginia fan who's like, yeah, fire Neil Brown? Is his... No, uh, Neil Brown needs fired. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. You're not alone in that, Hello, Billy. You're not alone. Casey Anthony got away with it for $5. I live in Clemson. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh, know all the people who would know and decision makers and 100% Clemson is gone by 2026. This is real. And almost certainly it is SEC. In God's name, image, yeah, and likeness. I don't see, and we've talked about this on the show, Clemson isn't a fit in the Big Ten. No. Nope. I don't think they're a fit at all in any way, shape, or form in the Big 12. I think their only place is the SEC. Yeah. Now, like, North Carolina is a really interesting example. Because let's say Casey Anthony got away with it for $5 and your mom and stuff is correct. By 2026, Clemson's gone. Stay hard! Florida State's gone. Certainly Carolina's gone. NC State probably. And you know Duke's not hanging Duke out. Duke is Duke. And we already told you who broke the story that Miami was a problem and wanted out. Yeah, yeah we the did. Balls. Yeah, Yeah. I'm telling you, that's when you're going to see Oregon State and Washington State with a real chance to find a way out. I, mm. uh, UW fan Jim says, sorry, thick here. Oh, to go back to your other comment, where is that? I'm, I apologize. Um, live in Seattle, and I think you guys are selling the Cougar fans short. They are thick here. Yeah, and I, I think that's why they, they draw a number. 
I totally agree, UW fan. Raptor eighty eight. Let's talk about the Bears instead. Stop, dude. I'll, what's okay again? Dude, what's I'll refund talk your about, money dude. right now. Actually, I won't. My bad. We're gonna talk. The Bears game's on our list. They're gonna lose fourteen straight. The Chicago. <coughs> I can't even say it out loud. Raptor 88, that was not nice. Oh, you meant the California Golden Bear. No, they, oh. They're not good either. They're, they're not good either. Uh, Big Blue Horses for $5. Can you imagine the carnage from a blown-up ACC grant of rights deal that is viewed as ironclad? Litigation nation, baby. <laughs> Bring it on. Where's, where's Popcorn, my boy, anyone? Uh, where's my boy, Boss Frog? Yeah, seriously. I, You know, I, yeah. Uh, wet blanket gives us a middle finger for calling us Okie State. Okay, I'll never do it again. Okay, wh- w- what do they want? What do you want to be called? I, I don't know. What do you want to be called? I don't know. Jeremy Callahan, uh, Will Howard was on the show yesterday. God damn it, I miss one yeah, day. Yeah, dude, I mean, you're casual. I mean, you miss, like, again, uh, you can't miss shows. Yeah. We don't miss shows, so how can you miss shows? It's on the channel, by the way. You can go back and watch the entire... <laughs> he was great. Will, I'm a huge Will Howard guy. Yeah, listening, listening to him talk about packing the box was incredible. What? You're a child, sir. 